Thanks for watching. This video today is about how to do a quick uh, and simple pre-ride check. So before you start your bike up, you wanna do a couple of essential checks so you know your motor scooter is safe to then take it out in the road. Why do we do this? Pretty simple, we don't wanna be riding on our bike and have some kind of mechanical malfunction that could have been prevented. You don't want any problems with your brakes or your tires, whatever it might be. We, we don't want problems. So this pre-drive check is to prevent problems. Now, there's lots of different methods out there um, and they're all fine. The key is that you find your own that works for you. So I've got one that I've developed that's pretty kind of simple and very quick. I don't want to waste a lot of time on this. But if you're a beginner and you're getting your license and your instructor says that you've got to follow this one, there's methods like start from the bottom and work your way up from the back to the forwards or do the fluids and then the electricals, things like this. There's T clocks as well, or there's A, B, C, D. There's lots and lots of different systems. Whatever your riding instructor tells you to do or whatever the license requires, just do it. Whatever they say, no need to argue, don't waste your time um, challenging any of the systems. Just do their system, get your license, and then once you've got your license, you can develop your own routine. Anyway, here's my routine for my pre-ride safety check on my motor scooter, scooty, scooter, before I hit the road. So I'm leaving home, about to jump on my bike. First thing I'm doing is just having a look at the bike. So I can see the bike from afar, First thing I'm looking for is there any fluids or, or liquids that have leaked out. That's on my approach. Or is there any like extra grime? So you can see on the front wheel and the rear wheel, you've got your disc brakes. Uh, are there, is, there, is there any kind of grime or buildup? I'll just show you a close up now. So that's, that's, so that's pretty quick and simple. That's actually on my approach. As I'm walking to my bike, I'm just doing a quick visual check. Now the second thing I do is actually, when I get to the bike is, kick the tires. I'm checking to see if there's any air pressure. Now I have had air leak out overnight or perhaps I, I haven't ridden my bike for um, for a while. Maybe I haven't ridden it for a month and then when I go to jump on the bike I think, hang on, there's something wrong with the air. There must be some kind of a slow leak. So checking your tires is the next thing I do. So on this tire, so what I'm looking for, on the approach, Looking as there's any like excessive grime or build up, you know, too, too much dust or any kind of brake issues. But then I'm looking at the tires. Now, first of all, checking the tire pressure. With a simple kick, you can kind of work out, yeah, there's air, there's air in that tire, I'm ready to go. But with a visual, I can also to see if there's any kind of um, nails or tacks or screws. But I'm also gonna look at the wall. I can see on this tire, there's actually a few cracks on the wall of this one. So I'm gonna actually take this to a tire shop get them to have a look at this and see whether I need some new ones because tires they do wear out um, you're looking at the the tread as well and that will uh, wear down over time but sometimes if you don't ride your bike a lot they just might get past their use by date because the material here that that uh, that makes a tire doesn't last forever so it will deteriorate over time so it's important you may they, they may go past their use by date before you actually wear out the tread now I'll just show you the tread. Now the tread's important, particularly if you're on a wet road, because that displaces the water. So you've still got a lot of uh, surface area making contact with the road. And if, there's, if it runs over any water, it pushes it, it away. So it's important to have enough tread depth. So looking for air pressure, looking for any damage, and looking at the tread. And if that's all good to go, you can, you can, then, move, you can then move on to the next step. Jeez, it's hot out here today. Part of my normal tire check routine, I just do a, do a visual check and a kick. That's it, and I'm ready to go. But once every couple of months, I do actually get my tire gauge and actually check the pressure, or I can do it at the gas station and make sure that I actually have enough pressure. Now, whatever your bike, build and model, type it into Google and find out the recommended air pressure. That's, that's the easiest thing to do. It's actually a bit light. I'm gonna put a bit of air in that. I'm gonna get some, next time I get some fuel, I'm gonna put a bit of air in that. Okay, next stage. So the next thing is I actually sit on that, the bike. So next thing I do is kick the kickstand up. And the first thing I grab the handlebars. So I'm gonna check a couple of things with my handlebars because it's the first thing I touch when I sit down. First of all, 
is the throttle release it uh, like uh, what do you call recoiling the right way so when you let go when you turn the throttle and let go it should bounce back and to the off position or the idling position next thing everything feel right with the with the brakes the brake lever how's the other brake lever feel and the other thing I can do is a turn of the handlebars just to feel if it's actually smooth going from smooth all the way to the right all the way to the left that's no catches or anything like that next thing while I'm still here are the mirrors now mirrors mirrors are interesting because depending on where you're sitting on the bike uh, you'll need to adjust these so sometimes if I'm sitting up I'll, I'll just do a quick adjustment or if I'm down a little bit or I've got a passenger with me so these things they do move so when you're going over a bumpy road they probably these, these things can can often move a little bit or your position might move a bit a little bit so don't feel bad about just doing those little bit of adjustments now and again now what you should be able to see in your mirror a little bit of yourself a little bit of your arm but mostly beside and behind Bloody hell, I shouldn't have done this in the middle of the day. <laughs> or I should have found a, a nice cool spot to do it. I found it in the direct sun in the middle of the day. Anyway, I'm gonna push on because this is a quick pre-ride check and I can, I'm, I'm, I'll get this done and then get, in, uh, get on the road because it's nice when you're out on the road and the wind cools me down. Okay, next thing I do is turn the key to the on position. Look at this, I'm gonna go gonna move that bike into the shade so wheels and tires I've done handlebars and mirrors I've done now it's time to turn this key to the on position and watch the lights light up on my dashboard so the lights will go through an ignition sequence and it's important to get to know get familiar with your own uh, bike and the electrical readouts now i can see i've got my indicator on i'm going to turn that off um, abs is flashing on mine which is fine because abs doesn't work when i'm not moving the oil light comes on to say hang on we don't see any oil getting pumped in around the engine uh, and that goes off once i start the engine up and it says ah yes you've got oil in your engine so this is actually normal for my starter now the next the, the other thing is really really important check that you got fuel now after I've um, checked the electricals on the dash, I want to also check the, these important electrics, which are the indicators. So I need the key to, key to on, which it is. Now on a motorcycle, it's actually really easy to check these. If I put my right indicator on, I can see it's flashing, flashing here on my dash. But also, I can actually just lean forward enough to see this flashing here. And then I can do the other side. Now, if you're actually having trouble leaning forward and seeing, you can actually just put your hand there because then you can see your hand glowing. If the electric readouts are all fine, you can then start up the engine. Now for that, I need to have my brake on. And then I give her the, put the old ignition on. And now you'll notice that the oil light has gone on. Now you need to you need to kind of uh, utilize all your senses here. So actually, I'm listening. Here's the next thing I'm doing. It's like, does that sound normal? You'll know your bike, and you'll know what sounds normal or not. So that's the next thing you're doing. Is just does that is that engine just running like it normally does? and that's good now not only do you want to check to see if your bikes um, in good working order before you hit the road there's another really important piece of the puzzle and that's yourself so before you hop on the bike there's a couple of things you should do is just check your physical health uh, not so long ago I had a bit of a cold and my balance was a little bit I felt a bit lightheaded and thinking about my lightheadedness and how important balance is I thought you know what today's the day I take the car um, or if your vision, something's not right with your vision, or you've got headaches. So any kind of physical issues or, you, or your, some issue with your hand and you're just going to have trouble, you know, uh, pressing the, on the brake levers. So if you don't physically feel uh, right, don't hop on your bike. So you need to check yourself. 
Now also, um, there's a couple of other things it would be wise to do. Now I don't go anywhere on a bike unless somebody knows what I'm doing. So my wife or my daughter say, I'm going to the shop, I'm going here, I'm going to the football club. Let people know where you're going. But sadly enough, there are fatalities on the road. There are the, the, the number of accidents with motorcycles, very, very high. So just let people know where you're going and what you're doing. Um, now the other thing you also want to know is yourself. Where are you actually going? If you're on a familiar path, there's no, no great worry. But if you're going somewhere new, don't start riding and then try and work out where you're going later because you can't be looking at your phone and things while you're going. It's much harder to, to, to do that on a scooter than it is a car. So before you hop on your bike, know where you're going and know which roads, which turn offs. And if you're near, if it's a long ride as well, where are you gonna have a little stop, have a little break, toilet stop, drink break, whatever it might be, or fuel stops. So this is preparing yourself before you hop on the, on, on the, on the bike. And that's an important stage. Okay, now I'm ready to ride. Um, now what I'm gonna do is a new kind of a little feature. I'm gonna strap the camera to my chest. And I'm going to do what's called the commentary ride. So as I'm riding to my, for, for about five minutes, just to conclude this video, I'm just going to be talking out loud about what's going on in my mind uh, to help beginners. So this is quite a common um, training tool, which uh, instructors, motorcycle, truck, car instructors all use, the commentary drive or commentary ride. So I'm just going to be talking aloud, thinking aloud as I ride to my next destination. Okay, just check on the mirrors, make sure they're in the right position because these things easily get knocked by other people or they just come a bit loose or maybe I'm sitting in a different position. So before I take off, I'm just checking those mirrors. Yep, they're good to go. So as I take off, I'm just going to do a little check of my rear brake. Yeah, that's working. How's the front brake going? Yeah, it's working as well. Okay. You can also, once you've got the skills, you can even do... No, don't bother doing that. I was going to say check your rear brake. Don't do that. This is a beginner's video. Okay, I'm coming out of the driveway. Now, this driveway, in the last video, we talked about how to take hazards. I don't want to take this crack in the driveway on an angle or it gets a bit wobbly. So I'm going to get over it and then I'm going to do the turn. So that means I need a bit of turning space. And looks like now's my chance. So over the bump, over the bump, and now I'm going to turn where it's flat. And get on the gas when you get when you take off in a giveaway situation because you want to get going with the flow of traffic. It's quite annoying when someone pulls out in front of you and they go slow. So going with the flow is very important motorcycling principle. Okay, can I fit here? I'll just take it easy. Yeah, I can fit. Can I get by this guy while I've got a bit of space there? Yep, now I gotta get in front of this guy while there's a little bit of space there. Now I'm gonna get in my better road position. Here I am, this is the best road position because I'm right behind the driver in front of me. I got space to my left. If I ever need to swerve to the left, I've got space. And the guy behind me in the car can see me as well. So I'm actually part of the traffic here. Don't forget, you're a motorcycle, you're allowed to be on the road. Don't feel, I see this a lot in Asia. Motorcycles think, oh, maybe I've got a better hide, you know, go on the side there because I'm only on a bike. It's like, no, no, you take ownership over the road. You have a license, you, you pay your registration, you have a right to be on this road and to be treated like a road user. So be part of the traffic. Now, this is also part of this uh, important stage of going with the flow. So I wanna maintain my safety distance here. So whatever speed that guy's going is what I'm doing. I'm not going slower than him. I'm not going faster than him. I'm just continuing and going with the flow. That's the most cooperative way to be a road user. Just going with the flow. With, in a predictable fashion as well. So other road users, when they gets a bit annoyed with me and they want to go past me, I'm maintaining a kind of a good consistent speed. So I'm a good road user. Okay, I got the taxi coming out in front of me. No one's behind me. I just checked my mirror, so I'm just going to slow and let this guy out. 
still checking my mirrors. Someone's sneaking up the left side. He's gone. That's fine. Now, I'm going to be taking a right a bit later on, so I'm not in a rush because I do want to turn right. So I'm going to stay here. I'm not going to jump in that left lane and get around. I'm just going to stay here. Again, maintain this good safety margin. Now, the benefit of being on the right side as well, I can actually see past that taxi. So I can see what's up ahead of him. Now, I see a lot of beginners. All they do is look at the guy in front. But I want to have a nice view up ahead so you can see those cars up ahead uh, turning. That's what I'm turning. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm turning in. Okay, I'm just going to steady my speed because I don't want to stop. You actually want to try and avoid the stop start. That's for me. Keeping, on the, keeping rolling is the easiest and, and the least stressful way to ride. So just keep it rolling. Now, right now, this road's shocking. So a lot of my attention is actually on the road surface. So I have a quick glance up ahead. I see the white car, check my mirrors. Now back to the road surface. Road surface, road surface cracks everywhere. We've got a white car coming up ahead. So I'm gonna swing over to the left, give him a bit of space. I don't want to drive on the crack though. Oh, now the speed bump, where's the best place to go over the speed bump? Just here. Good. Now I've got the bend. Where's the best place to turn? There it is there. Checking my mirrors again. Checking what's up ahead. Checking this road surface. Checking my mirrors. Checking up ahead. What's this guy doing? He's got his indicator on, but he's fine there. Got another speed bump. Benefit of following somebody is you see they tackle the hazard. Like that guy's just gone over a speed bump. I didn't know the speed bump was there until I saw him go up and down. So it's handy if you can follow someone at a safe distance. It's actually the easiest way to ride. Anyway, next destination, the car wash or the bike wash. Here it is here. Okay, I can beat that guy. So I'm going to sneak in and then try and get in at 90 degrees. Time to wash the bike. I'm going to take this bump 90 degrees. And then turn, and then up, there we go. Okay, so I've just turned up to the service station. I've looked up Google for tyre pressure for the Vespa Primavera 150, which is what I've got. And it said it should have uh, 33, no, 30 to 30 PSI. So, you've never used these before, and these videos are for beginners. I'll push this one to 33. And then... I find my valve. And I press this on, nice and square. And it'll pump air until it gets to 33. And when it does, it'll beep. So it's starting to beep there now. So there, these tires were a little bit flat. Now, one other thing to, I, I mentioned about the, the sound and using different sensors, when you do your pre-drive check uh, and you start the engine, I said, I'll oh, just listen to see if it, it sounds okay. The other thing is the feel. So when you're riding away, you're feeling the brakes. You feel the rear brakes, the brake lever, the back brake, the brake, the brake lever, the steering, also the tires. If you're familiar enough with your motor scooter, You'll probably know when you're turning what it kind of feels like. Now, for about a week, I've noticed that when I've been turning, it is a bit sluggish. So my sensitivity kind of I started to think maybe there is not enough air pressure in that front tire. So that's using my using the sense of feel. But you need to be familiar with your bike for that kind of thing. Um, so checking your tires with the kick, but also just that kind of a bit of a feel. But you can't go wrong with an actual tire gauge. And if in doubt, just come on down to the service station um, and pop some air into it.